Welcome back to part two on how to install a bike from scratch. In part one, we got the frames ready, we installed the bottom brackets, we got the headsets ready, and this part two is gonna start with installing of the forks. My two forks here are brand new. They are the taper type in which I have inch and a half to inch and one eight. And the steer is uncut. This uh, length is about 10 and a half inches. That's usually way too long for normal use, so it has to be trimmed down. Also, we have to install what's called the crown race. The crown race comes with the headset and it slides onto the steerer tube, but uh, it has to be pressed. You can see that little gap over there. What the crown race does, it's going to center the fork right onto that bottom headset bearing. If you watch my video on the headsets, you know that this crown race can be split, in which case you can easily slide it down all the way to the bottom of the steerer tube. In my case, they're made out of steel, and they're one piece, so I have to press them down. That can be done with another DIY tool, and you can see here just a piece of inch and a half PVC pipe that I bought from the hardware store. That is exactly the dimension here of my steerer tube. So get a little bit of grease here on the steerer. Slide your crown race. Now slide it upside down onto that PVC pipe and just banging on the ground until the crown race buttons up. And, and that's it, you're done. For this next step, you're gonna need your stem and also what's called the headset spacers. But let's take a look at how this fits together. So you have your crown race centered onto this bottom bearing. Then you have your head tube from the frame right here, the top bearing, the top cover. Then you have spacers usually here, and then you fit in your stem. These spacers, what they do, they just uh, lift up the uh, stem a little bit in case you want that for adjusting your cockpit. Unless you really, really know what you want, I would highly recommend to install at least about 20 millimeters, if not 25 millimeters of spacers to start with. And then when you know what you want, just trim it down a bit more. Let me show you what I mean. So push your fork into the frame. Get that top bearing. Your top cover goes right up there. Then your spacers and the stem. At this point, you want to grab usually a four millimeter Allen key and just tighten these bolts of your stem. This is what's going to hold your fork in place and not falling off. And that is the top of your steerer tube. You're gonna actually trim it right down here. So mark it somehow. In my case, I will mark it with a pencil. And you're actually gonna cut it about two, three millimeters below that line. Cutting this steerer tube is no different than cutting a piece of aluminum pipe. So you're gonna need a vise, a hacksaw with a good blade, and a bit of masking tape. I need to cut a bit more than just this. I need to go down about two or three millimeters. This cut doesn't have to be perfect. So just take your hacksaw and just cut to the edge of that masking tape. And that's it, steer is cut. Now you take a file and just round up the edges nicely. At the top of this steer assembly, you have the preload bolt that goes into the top cap. And this has to be screwed into something. Well, that something is the star nut that has to be just pushed inside of the steerer tube. Installing the star nut can be done on the cheap again. All you need, it's a small screwdriver. You just slide it in from the top, then get a mallet and start whacking it. Again, you push it down until it goes around here, 10, 15 millimeters down. However, this is one of those where I would highly recommend getting a tool, this thing, which is the star nut, uh, tool. We'll push it in exactly in the middle. It's going to be nicely centered, not crooked, not left, not right. 
and the tool itself cost about 10 bucks so highly recommend this one with the star nut in I'm ready to start the final assembly of this fork now you've seen the installation of the fork however this time you're gonna use grease use a good amount here a waterproof grease because it's gonna protect that bearing big time and also pay attention to the taper here this is nice and round in one, in one side that side is gonna go into the cup good amount of uh, waterproof grease on that top cap as well don't be shy let it have it, it's gonna squeeze out if it's too much and reinstall the fork just like before so it's gonna be your top bearing put some more grease here on top of the top bearing then get that top cover pushed in and you can see the excess grease being pushed out that's fine you're gonna wipe it off spacers and stem go next and then the top cap you can see that two three millimeter shorter steering tube that's why you cut it shorter so then you can attach your top cap put some grease on that preload bolt and this is screwing into the star nut you just installed our torque value is usually specified here on the stem for these two bolts but for now just tighten them snug same with this preload bolt just tighten them all snug for now you're going to adjust them properly with the bike on the floor the stem length and also the rise here you choose it based on your application but uh, important for attaching your bar which is next in my list it's going to be this dimension here this one is 31.8 or old style if you want the new style is going to be 35 millimeter and your stem and the handlebar have to match also handlebar width is important if you don't know exactly what you need just leave it a bit longer in my case I know it's a bit too long for my application so I have to trim it next handlebars these days have the cutting marks so that will help you figure out how much you need to trim from each side if this bar was aluminum all I needed was properly the miter box eventually and the hacksaw and that would be all I need because my handlebar is carbon I first used some of this masking tape to wrap the uh, handlebar and then I mark my 10 millimeters I want to cut right here so I'm gonna cut through this just to make sure that the carbon fiber stays nicely together and it doesn't fray at the end just cut slowly use that miter box to make a nice clean cut see my cut here is pretty clean because it took my time some people prefer to use some uh, nail polish at this time just to cover the cut end right here just so it doesn't fray in the future for carbon handlebar use a little bit of this carbon paste right here where the touch points are with the stem do the same here on the stem plate if you are using aluminum you don't really need to do this however it won't hurt if you have some carbon paste laying around just eyeball the position of the handlebar right now and you're gonna install these four bolts they come in with Loctite on them nothing else is needed they're gonna be tightened up to five newton meters so you're gonna need your torque wrench for this for now all we need to do is just tighten these snug don't over tighten it just keep in mind this is gonna be crisscross when we tighten it so that is one two three four and as you're tightening that make sure that this gap here uh, between the plate and the stem kind of remains the same on both ends unless otherwise specified by the manufacturer and now that it starts to look like a bike it's time to concentrate on the wheels so I can continue the assembly with the bike on the ground my two frames here differ in the fact that the Norco has a through axle and the Kona has a QR skewer so the spacing here is 135 millimeter this one is 142 148 or boost is also available these days and some manufacturers are pushing out 157 millimeter spacing here for the rear wheel obviously your hub has to match that and you see the wheel set that I built for the Kona look at the shape of that end cap that is a QR and you look at this set of wheels this is taking a through axle 142 millimeter 
I bought these used uh, set of Syncross wheels that usually come with Scott bikes. Usually when you hear 5mm in regards to spacing, it refers to the QR skewer, the good old one. So most probably you have 135 millimeter spacing here. You have 12 millimeters for the throw axle in the rear. And the thickness of the front is usually 15 millimeters, definitely for the new modern ones. So you see it over there. Both my forks here use 100 millimeter uh, front spacing. Boost would be 110 millimeters but uh, you can mix and match the front boost with the uh, standard rear or vice versa depending on the bike that you're building. There is no connection between the axle spacing of the front and the rear wheel. The hubs that your wheels come with will dictate the type of brake discs you can install. You can see the IS 6 bolts over here already installed on my Kona wheel set. And here the Syncross comes with what's called center lock which is a Shimano standard whereas the disc just uh, sits on that spline and then is just uh, squeezed in there with this lock ring. I have a couple of videos talking about discs uh, of either type so I'm not going to cover more of that in this video. Just use the links on the screen to get more information about this. Most current wheel sets allow you to install either Shimano or SRAM drivetrains on them. You can see a Shimano free hub body over here and that is an XD driver. The XD driver is for SRAM type cassettes. This is an 11 speed SRAM uh, 1042 that's going to go on the Kona. And on the Norco I'm going to install the E13 946 that's an 11 speed as well. I did cover the E13 installation recently so I'm just going to put the link on the description. But uh, for my Kona, all I'm going to use is this cassette tool and a torque wrench that allows me to torque the cassette to 40 Newton meters. If using an XD driver, and this is a SRAM cassette, 12 speed Eagle will be the same. Just grease up that area over there. You see there is a threaded area right here on the dome. Then on the XD driver itself, just grease up this top of the XD driver that's going to touch the cassette and also the spline at the bottom. You do this to prevent cracking or noises coming from the cassette later on. It's not needed for Shimano cassettes. Lastly, use the cassette tool to tighten this up. It is 40 newton meters for both SRAM and Shimano cassettes. One last thing about rotors here. I have installed 180 up front, 160 in the back of the Kona for a bit more aggressive riding. Norco is going to get 160 mil front and rear. On that one I'm counting the grams as it's going to be more of a cross-country race type of bike. Usually you would go for the bigger discs for more braking power or stopping power and better control. Many bikes these days come with 180 front 160 rear or 180 front and rear. And before I install the tires uh, it's about time to talk a little bit about using tubes or tubeless and I highly recommend if you've never tried it to give it a try this time because you're building from scratch remember all you're gonna need if you wanna keep it the cost low is Gorilla Tape one inch width and use that as rim tape for your rim you're definitely gonna need a set of valves but the uh, ones from stands work just fine you're also gonna need sealant and I've been using stands it's probably easily available but there's a few other types that you can easily find at your local bike shop or online. And without going into the details here, just keep in mind that many tires have a directional pattern. And if you want to look like a pro, you might want to line up that uh, valve hole with the branding on the tire. In my case, I'm going to line, line it up with that yellow strip here on my rim. And as you look at your wheel from the disc side, this is the rotation of the wheel and you might want to use a set of tire levers. For me, for installation of tires, I usually don't use any levers, I just do it by hand. Ready to install the wheels. If you're using a QR skewer, remember that you have the actual skewer. The lever is here on the non-drive side and this nut and you also have the two 
springs over here and make sure you install them with the smaller part towards the wheel give this a few turns and you're ready to install it on the bike it's very hard to know that the actual axle is going fully into the dropouts of the frame or the fork so that's why uh, I always recommend if you have the bike on a stand tighten this up push the lever with the palm of your hand but then when you have the bike on the on the ground do that one more time just to make sure you have it fully and properly inserted if you have a newish bike chances are it's gonna have uh, throw axles front and rear or at least front put a thin layer of grease everywhere on this through axle and then push the wheel in its place and install it if yours is not new or you're having issues with this I have a video describing a few things that you can do to get yours fixed or adjusted with the wheels on this really starts to look like a bike look at that we're ready to install the brakes and the drivetrain but I will leave that for part 3 of this video how is your guys uh, build coming along? Do you have any questions for me? If so, let me know in the comments below. If you haven't done so, don't forget to like the video or subscribe to the channel. In the description, I've included a lot of links for the videos that I've referred to. And I will see you in part three on how to install a bike from scratch. Cheers, guys. Cheers.